September 6th meeting of the DRB to order. And we will start uh, by introducing the board members uh, starting on my right. Sharon Allen. Kevin O'Connell. Meredith Crandall, staff. Uh, Rob Goodwin, I'm the chair. Abby Waite. Joe Kiernan. And uh, we may have um, Michael Lazorczyk uh, joining us later on on the Zoom platform, but uh, we do have a quorum in the room tonight. so. Majority of this meeting will be uh, right in front of you in the room. Um, so at this time, I would like to turn it over to Meredith to review some of our remote meeting procedures, but we don't have anyone online, so do we have to do that? Well, I'm going to do it because we're streaming live over Orca Media. So Perfect. if somebody is watching and wants to log in, we need to just do this little bit. I think it's, we haven't ever had anybody do it, but just in case. Yep. Um, all right. So. Just a little bit. I'm going to be sharing my screen here. And this is for people watching at home over Orca Media. If you're watching this live, you can participate in tonight's development review board meeting via the Zoom platform. You can join getting video and interactive access by typing this link into your web browser. You can also call in using this 929 phone number. And then once you're in on that, once that answers, plug in this meeting ID, um, and then you'll be able to hear everything over the phone as well as ask questions um, and be able to participate in tonight's meeting. If you are trying to log in and you're having problems, please email me. Here's my email address. It's mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I will be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, if anybody does log on, please know that turning on your video is optional and we ask you to remain on mute um, unless you are, have been called on and then you can introduce yourself um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting and I would find that out via my email, then the meeting will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I'm going to hand the meeting back over to the chair. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Marta. This time I'll accept a motion for approval of the agenda of tonight's meeting. So move to approve the agenda. Second. Second. All right. Okay. Who was who moved that? Was that Joe or was that Sharon? Which one did you hear? Motion by Joe. Uh, second by Kevin. Um, now I'm going to do something that I learned just recently from Steve Everett. If you're all in favor, state your name. Sharon. Joe. Kevin. Abby. Rob. It's approved. I think that works. Yeah, we're all sure about that. that. Also, I've never heard about that. I just saw it. <laughs> I like that. I saw it later. <laughs> yeah. But the, they yeah. both work. We're all in person. So we'll say aye. All right. Do that. Um, <laughs> all right. Okay. Comments for the chair. What was that? I said it's quick. We can all say aye at once. Exactly. <laughs> that works. Let me test that one out. Um, all righty. Thank you everyone for coming this evening. Um, and um, we will uh, try a little abbreviated version of uh, motions for the smaller business um, this evening, like we just did. Eyes will be it, as we discussed. And um, I think this time we'll welcome. Uh, nope, never mind. <laughs> we have the move the minutes from uh, eight fifteen, August fifteenth. Um, as folks got a time to review those minutes. I did. I make a motion to approve the minutes from the 815 meeting. We have a motion by Sharon to approve the minutes from August 15th. I'll second. Second by Abby. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Right. Um, that is approved. Minutes from August 15th. All righty. Brings us to our uh, main order of business for this evening, which is 57 Maple Lane. Um, and is it Steve? Steve. All righty, welcome. Um, I just, could Thank I you. Have the uh, network key so I can log into the internet? Uh, sure. Yeah, it's I think on the end there. Okay. Sorry, I don't have it in my head. Just always, uh, so right here, City Hall open. Oh, there. See, um, and I want to go to the 
gone forever. Sorry about that. So um, this is a sketch plan meeting tonight, so it's relatively informal. We're not have to swear you in, and there's no, uh, you know, it's not really a, necessarily a formal record, but if you want to just introduce yourself. Okay, and um, you, um, I guess the way this works, we'll have Meredith give a little brief overview of the application, um, and then uh, I guess we'll leave most of it to you because you know a lot more details about it than anybody else. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. Uh, so, yep, it's not like there's a whole big audience here. <laughs> um, this is a sketch plan subdivision. Um, and the proposal is to divide it into two parcels. Um, there's, as you saw in the staff report, there's some sort of complications. We have, really, it's an existing private road that goes through this parcel as it stands right now. Um, it was recognized under E911. And that was sort of a lead up to um, building a six unit residential building that's there on the parcel under what they used to have to run that through a quote unquote PUD process, but there was no subdivision of land involved in that. This is under the old regulations. So there was no plat filed showing the bounds of that right of way of that private road. Um, under our regulations, street boundaries actually naturally subdivide. So <laughs> exactly where the, the boundaries are shown here may shift here between sketch and final so that we don't have a floating triangle of, of a third parcel being created. Um, whether that means that the, the road right of way gets expanded to encompass that or it gets merged in with the um, Joe's Kitchen parcel that's all going to be be discussed as to what what makes the most sense. Um, so that's the one one sort of complication, and then the other one, and this is something that hasn't really come up before, even though we've had com subdivisions of commercial properties before, is that here, the parcel that has the six residential units on it, is theoretically getting small enough to impact. Um, total site landscaping calculations. And we don't know what the total lumen output is. So it sort of, it bleeds over into a site plan analysis. Are we making that parcel so small that it then violates site plan regulations? Um, now, you know, there's multiple ways around this. This is why we're here at sketch plan to sort of discuss things out, see what the board thinks about it. Um, this is just one of those things where the regulations say site plan applies to any development other than single and two family homes and development includes subdivision. So <laughs> technically we're supposed to look at that. Whether that actually makes logical sense is a question, but here it could, you could, you know, is it okay to approve a subdivision where you're now making the land so small that it's emitting more light than it's supposed to on that per acre limit. You know, are you suddenly taking away so many trees because you've subdivided those off that you now no longer have enough trees to meet the ratios that they're supposed to have for trees to impervious surface? So it's a little hiccup that got thrown in here that we haven't ever <laughs> yeah. had come up before because our other subdivisions were parcels big enough that those questions did not arise. Those complications did not arise. So this is in the river zone. Yep. How does that affect I mean, what we're looking at? Um, in the riverfront, it, 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 it changes the um for river i think it really does the um it, i mean it, it changes what what zone lighting zone it's in which changes your light allowance um but you know we don't even know how many how many total external lights are on that building right now because um, that wasn't something that was factored in when it was built as much yeah. so so it could potentially have too many lights Right, but if it already has too many, right? It's a previously existing nonconformity yeah. as long as the subdivision doesn't make it worse. Got it. 
right? Because normally we think of those as all dimensional, right? If you have a building that's too close to a boundary, as long as you don't move that boundary even closer to the building, you can approve the subdivision. This is not a dimensional item with regard to like setbacks or total impervious surface, but it's still technically dimensional because changing the size of the parcel changes your calculation of how much impervious surface you have on the parcel compared to how much, how many trees, how much grass, you know, your total lumens per acre, uh, everything you take away is stuff that doesn't have lights on it. And you're left with a smaller area with lights. We made the total lumens per acre more that ratio number. Um, so it's just something that'll need to be answered before we get to the final. Or get too far into the weeds here. Yeah. Steve, I'd love to hear, hear about your, your project and uh, <laughs> what's going on here. Okay. <laughs> so the piece of land as it is now um, has the apartment building that was built in 17. And um, then it has this um, 1,600 square foot cement block building, something like that. Maybe it's 1,200. Um, and uh, seven maple lane <clears throat> that's uh 57 maple lane yes correct <clears throat> and so what we're doing is subdividing that off um, from the other one with the hope of um, we have somebody that wishes to purchase that building the person that's been leasing it for the last 10 years or so that's the soup factory yeah It is served by a private <clears throat> private road. <clears throat> and so the space mirror this is talking about, it's <clears throat> on the left of the roadway between that and the railroad tracks that does have some outside lighting on it mm -hmm. that's for the parking lot. That I don't know what the looms are on that without checking that was part of the original application back in 16 for the uh, uh, building. And then, you know, outside it just has uh, porch lights. I think on each floor, I think there's three. I think there's three because there's uh, two apartments on each floor. And so there's a light outside each apartment door and then one set in the middle so for the stairs. Is that going to stay a private lane? Is that the yes? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when you talk say about the access from private road, I mean that's Maple Lane, or I mean, is it? It's, it's called Maple Lane now. It, yep, it's been yep. So it's Maple Lane. So the Maple Lane comes down off of um, Ferry right. Street and then makes that curve. Yep. Um, and goes dead basically goes all the way till it hits 57 Maple, what would be the new boundary for 57 Maple. And yep. it, that building is currently numbered 57 Maple. For E911, like in their records, it continues actually till it hits like the boundary with Putnam. Mm -hmm. But that width starts to get so narrow that it doesn't meet the, the zoning street standards. Okay. So I think for this plat, if it were filed as is, it would show Maple Lane ending where it hits 57 Maple. Dead ending. Dead yeah. ending there. Um, and that's, you know, there's no Department of Public Works stuff. It doesn't have any issues with that. Um, and yep. neither does the, is the fire chief because I mean, this is all existing mm -hmm. use. Um, right. And both buildings are sprinkled too. Yeah. That helps for the fire chiefs. So the, on, the only access point you're proposing in the subdivision, you know, is basically along Maple Lane, sort of best shown with that right away, parallel right. railroad tracks in, and not coming, you know, the shortest distance from Barry Street. That's not proposed to be a yeah. access point for the for the parcel. Is that a pedestrian way right now? Can you go from Joe Bueller's building up to Barry Street? You can. You, you can. can. Yeah, you is that my kismet? There. there? It's no mm -hmm. kismet's up the road. It's up further down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. he's down. Yeah. I guess that's the other question. It's good. <laughs> Would it continue to have pedestrian access, um, you know, through there? 
to, so the current parcel parcels one and two together the current parcel does have access through that private way to Berry Street what are we calling that? So are you talking about the, the, they come up Maple Lane? The paved driveway. Yeah, I mean technically, I mean that's a whole separate private property. Mm -hmm. So pedestrian access is actually over here. Oh, down Maple for, Lane. From from Maple Lane. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. there's sidewalks there. This okay. this sidewalk you can see on the plat yep. connects to a sidewalk on the other side of Maple Lane. Yep. Yep. Yeah, across Got it. But none of that is proposed to change nothing no, nothing I means the existing yeah circulation is going to be the same yeah and then so and then it looks like the Putnam uh, Street well eight Putnam Street does have access through Maple Lane as well that's correct I mean I don't know as if it's a needed right anywhere okay but we use it that way yeah, I think the way Don has drafted this, there's yeah. a private right of way there because there's a, it's like a loading dock there at the back of the Putnam. Right. right. That's the access to the rear of that building. Right. Right. Versus Putnam Street is on the other side of the building, so they have a front access on the other side. So it's not changing anybody's access to anything. This is part of this is how to memorialize what has been happening yeah. and allow Steve to sell this building with a little yeah. bit of land. Yep. Yeah. Board members have any questions on the general plan or concept here before we dig into the staff report? I put my wheels on this one. I'll, I'll be honest. <laughs> I mean, one, one question I had is whether um, you saw Meredith's staff report. Yes. And so she, looking at the sort of complexities of not leaving that hanging parcel there, she gave, I think, three different options there. Um, one which was to expand the uh, private road setbacks so that it encompassed everything. And it sounds like basically anything you're going to have to do, you're going to have to have some kind of shared parking agreement. Is that correct? Yes. And then there was a second option, which I'm not remembering. Uh, one was to have that triangular piece of land go to 57 Maple, but that starts getting weird because most of that parking is actually for for right. It seemed like that wouldn't be a good solution. Right. Yeah, no. I, just, I had to throw out all the options. And, so. then, and then there was the option of doing the condo thing, which I also thought was like, I, I didn't know what you thought about it, but I'd be interested to know. Well, at one time, I thought that was a good idea. And that's <laughs> how we started all this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't me who told him no on the condo thing. <laughs> um, so. Okay. But it was recommended uh, to me by uh, somebody that, uh, in city government that we should subdivide it would be a cleaner way to do it. So that's how we started on that. Yeah. I mean, it seems like it would be yeah. cleaner, yeah. you know, so you would have to have less agreements I, mean, I, I hate to say this but just try to get closer to the oh, microphone I'm just sorry. that because the minute taker will actually listen to the recording okay <laughs> yeah so did you have did you have a choice between those uh first two options the first one is, is to expand the the roadway to put the right way so that it just creates more Private on street parking. Private on street yes, parking. Yes, that of uh, the two. The, uh, that the would preference. be the okay. preference. That would probably be the cleanest it, way to go about it. It does seem the cleanest. Yeah. So if that were to go forward, what are the issues? Does that change the issues that we have to consider? Or um, how does it? Um, it not that doesn't you still end up with the whole site plan questions right but that resolves the potential floating parcel issue so you're still doing a subdivision into two parcels and mem memorialization of a private road right so we still need a on file some sort of road maintenance agreement and a shared parking agreement 
and it's not like the city would enforce the terms of those, but it shows that that the requirements of the zoning have been met, right? And that somebody's going to maintain those, and it doesn't become the responsibility of Department of Public Works to enforce any of that. Um, oops, sorry, Michael's. I don't know how long Michael's been waiting. I don't have beeps on here. Um, but then we still have to deal with yes, the technically creating that private street pulls that land away from 42 Maple, right? Which pulls away the trees that are in that little island and the lights. So you don't have to worry about the road meeting site plan, but you still have to say, okay, does what's left of the remainder, and so that would be what's labeled on here is which parcel? Parcel one, lot one, does that have enough landscaping to meet the total light scan landscaping requirements? You know, are, how are we making those things worse? Same mm -hmm. with like street trees, like, and it's also a question of do we actually, does it really? We've never had that question come up. Does that really subdivide it enough so that those street, those trees no longer count as street trees for lot one? Do they or don't they? Because they don't become, it's not like they become city property, mm -hmm. right? It's still owned by Steve. It's just, it forms a subdivision line, right? <laughs> Six street streets for lot. I mean, what? Yeah. I mean, if they're really, if my question is that there's a subdivision, so there's street trees and the streets for both lots one and two, right? Yeah, but it's not, it's, yeah, it's not becoming part of lot two. You can't count for lot two for sure. The question is, can you count them for lot one? You know, do we even look at street trees? Do we only look at, because street tree, I mean, that's really major site land. This is a major site plan. So it's just really the total site landscaping, right? Have we, has, has the subdivision reduced the total light site landscaping for lot one or not? I mean, I, I honestly, I'll, I would probably, if the numbers don't work out, not counting those, I would probably go to, to the attorney and be like, what do you think? Well, I guess but, but what I'm getting as we're evaluating this is like, you know, does it say, does it reduce total site landscaping for lot one? Or does it reduce the total, total site landscaping for lot one or two? Right, yeah, yeah. no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to look at both, okay. honestly. Yeah. Yeah, no, good point. Which I think, I don't know, I'm just looking at this plan for all of this, maybe this isn't really specifics. It's like, you know, it, there's, take the buildings out, out of the picture, you know, you have, you have surveyed lot one and surveyed lot two and like those are on, you know, those are on the plan. It's not like you're creating lot one yeah. right? and have the remainder, you know, it's like you're, you're drawing a line down the center yeah. and you're creating two lots out of one. Uh, so I don't know, maybe everyone knew that, but yeah, well not... to get there in my head. <laughs> no, that's, that's true. And do, do the trees and lights that are on that island that is now going to be part of the private road count for either of those or not do they are they their own little island separate which is how you would deal with it if it was a, 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 a city street it wouldn't count towards either of those right? in the staff report you said that you recommend that we don't make the non-compliance worse that's one of the that's how we're supposed to deal with non-compliances in general when we're right, so it's already non-compliant because right. this was all approved under the old regulation. And if we were to make this subdivision, it would make it worse. Theoretically, we haven't Theoretic. actually crunched so the numbers. Haven't right? really... I haven't actually crunched the numbers to see. Crunch the number. Which numbers would those be? Uh, the so lumens. the total. I haven't done the lumens. Okay. I haven't. I haven't done. Wait. Right, we just. I was like, I'm not even gonna. Dig, make, okay. Give me all that information. Dig down into that until yeah. we've all discussed yeah. it. Um, so I haven't looked, gone and counted like the number of bushes and the other trees. Right, there were some plans in there when it was built as to the number of trees, but they didn't dig into the actual number of bushes and things yeah. like we would now. I think it would be helpful to just have that data. I mean, my my 
my sense is that if, if we're making, we shouldn't make it worse as well. And if there's anything that needs to be done to ameliorate it, that would just be good data to, yeah. to, to have. Sure. Yeah. This was a get the read. No, that's people were like, oh, nope, no, we oh, don't care. We're just going to go forward with it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I see, I, I mean, I think I see maybe where you're going, Rob, a little bit like we're just drawing an arbitrary line, so like, does it really matter? I, I just, you know, I don't know from a precedent standpoint. Oh, I don't think I was trying to. Oh, you were saying that? It doesn't really matter. I was just trying to say that, like, we're drawing a line. But it's like, it's not just the Joe's Kitchen that we are evaluating here. It's like we're subdividing this parcel into two. And so the apartments are as much of, in my head, when I'm looking at it, the apartments are as much of a point of evaluation as mm -hmm. Joe's, Joe's. Okay, kitchen. that's what you were yeah. saying. Um, Got it. You know, it can be, yeah, just, it can be easy to get sucked into the like, oh, they're going to do something to Joe's kitchen, so they're going to create a lot and sell. We can't forget about the rest of the parcel because in a subdivision, they really are treated the same. Yeah, you're doing yeah. They're both being, it needs to be accepted. Yeah. Right. Yep. You're creating two new parcels. With the street, it's being memorialized. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, did we? I know we talked about the condo wise option here. That's not in the proposal, so we don't have to discuss it if you're not going there. When you say condo wise, I mean, that was me. Yeah, I just, sorry, so I'm just asking you, Mary. Yeah. Was that? That's not going the route of doing this as a as a plan unit development, is it? No, that was that and he could do that. It's I mean, because he's there's no addition of new buildings, no addition of new units, no addition of new anything. This the sale of the building and rights to use the land around it could mm -hmm. be done through a condo document that would get recorded upstairs in the city clerk's office, but wouldn't require any zoning permit approval whatsoever. Yeah. Right. You still would not have memorialized street boundaries, but you could still put in, I mean, you could still put in a private right of way and record that upstairs without the zoning permit requirement. Um, and that was as, the selling building, not the land. Uh, selling the building and a, what is it called? It's like a limited common area right to, the, he, he could, you know, Joe's Kitchen could still have individual limited rights to the land around it. Because I think you're know, uses some of that for outside seating or for, for grilling, right? So that the other members of the condo um, ownership wouldn't have those rights to that amount of land, okay. right? There's a way to do this through a condomization, which it sounds like you had already contemplated. We had, we spent quite a lot of time on that. Way. No, I got steered yeah. this way. Um, so. You know, that is a way to do it. It, as, as you said, it's not, in some ways it's not as clean in other ways, you know, depending on how you look at it, it's cleaner or harder. But you've already decided not to do that. I I didn't rule it out a hundred percent. Wanted to see if this was going to work. Right. If it didn't, we might go back to that. So that's always still an just an option in my view of things. So, in which case, you wouldn't see this again. <laughs> um. Could step back a little bit, and maybe talk a little bit about previous permit impacts. This, or does it not at all? If you want to go there. So, the previous permit is a historical document, right? Um, and we have to look at that in view of we we shouldn't be making changes that violate a very specific condition of that permit. On the other hand. We're now governed by completely different regulations. So if those conditions were in place to meet a regulation that has since then completely changed and revamped mm -hmm. and really has no place anymore, right? So if it said you needed X number of trees, 
let me I now require more trees. Uh, the, the parking. So sometimes it used to be required more parking, right? So, but our current regs don't require that much as much parking as we used to require. So if part of this was to reduce the parking and it still met our standard parking requirements and they were adding more green space, we'd say that's that's an acceptable change, even though technically it violates the old regulations, right? That's not happening here anyway. So that was just a theoretical I could think of where you ran into something. But you know, I've I've gone back and looked at that. We don't we're not gonna be running into those issues here. Um, it's not like a a subdivision that is now authorizing building on an area of land that was part of an open space agreement, right? There was nothing in this prior permit that said you had to leave so much of the land as open space. Right. That's not something that's going on here. I just, mm -hmm. I'm hung up on like the fact that and as recently as what, 2016, it was under different regs, but it was a planned unit development. But what what was required to go through planned unit development sure. approval? Totally not what you think of now as planned unit development. It was just because no, it yeah. was six units. Gotcha. It was a density trigger, yeah. not a we're somehow dividing up the land. Mm -hmm. And it didn't, it, when I looked back and looked at the whole staff report and the decision, yeah. It was not because they were clustering the density in a weird way. The density required standard was actually still the same in this particular zoning. In what the zoning district was then and what the zoning district was, is now had the same residential density standard. So they, they could have, they, they could have more units on this size parcel. Than they do. Correct. Right. So basically, you don't need a UPUD for this to exist. Right. For the present day. So nope. the exemptions that they got, you know, by it being PDA or the. They didn't the, get it. They didn't get it. No, there were no like density bonuses, nothing like that. It was strictly because there were six units being proposed. Yep. It had uh, extra layers of review. Yep. It was called a minor PUD. That is nothing like what we call a PUD. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> I mean, I just, and, I, and I, that yeah. makes perfect sense. I just want to be clear on that because it's like, if we have a PUD proof today and 10 years from now under our current regs, I would be very, uh, you know, like cautious to, to do anything but keep it as a PUD because I don't know. It's just yeah. one of those things once you're in it, you're in it forever, <laughs> but not under what, you know, that's a good explanation. So thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Just, I had the same questions and I went back and I read the whole yeah. decision and they went to the staff report. Yeah. So it seems like it would be good to get maybe some information about um about uh you know what the what the street tree count might be if, depending on which you know which where those trees got designed to live. Um and may, it sounds like the other issue is women's bank mm -hmm. or, or what kind of light is is out there. I mean, just to know anyway. On both though. Uh, yeah, I mean, I both. think, yeah, I mean. Just yeah, like I both think parcels. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it's basically a landscaping plan. So we'll, I'll talk to you about it, but we'll want counts, uh, counts of the trees that are there, including the sizes, you know, the bushes, um, and if we can find out what some of the species are in the heights. I mean, uh, I'll go, we can meet on site too and go through okay. it all. Cause it's also anything that is um, even perennial beds yeah. will count towards the landscaping totals. And I, because this isn't something that triggers major site plan, I don't think we have to look at the actual street trees but we need to know the total number of trees, right? Okay. We, can't, we can't end up in violation of the total site landscaping or at least not, you know, this, that's something we'll look at, right? right. We have to factor that in. And then yeah, we'll have to figure out the Lumen tools. We're not changing lights. So existing like shade shielding, right. that doesn't really matter, but the lumen tools. 
equals for each parcel will matter. Okay. That's the way I looked at it. I think if everybody agrees on that. Yeah. I think that's yeah, where we're we'll steer sense. and try to make sure we have that information. Yes. I think that would be great. I think that information would be really helpful. And, yeah. and at the same time, I also get that little bit of a feeling about this in the same way that there's, we're not changing the road. We're not taking up any pavement. We're not moving. You know, I mean, this is this is how it, you know. However, the lines get drawn here, it's, it's going to look exactly the same as it does right now. You know, so that I'm I've got a little leniency in my heart there somewhere. You know. <laughs> yeah, me me too. Like I don't I don't think yeah. we I'm not. I don't want to make this burdensome. But I think right good or being like a, a a stickler about it, but I think just having information the information. Great. Yeah, mostly for the the precedent that. It could, it could set. Right. Yeah. I mean, once again, we're, we're treading on new territory here. So that having the backup data would be useful, even if we, even if in the end we're deviating. Yes. Yeah. So and you have something to point to to say in this kind of situation, so it, it, it's, we're okay. It, it, it gives us, it gives us options as a board so that we can, so that we can have a, a, a menu of, of solutions in the future. Uh, whereas if we just do it in straight approval with everything being what pretty much what's presented to us today, we wouldn't have that option. Yeah. So then I after we did the landscape plan, then I'd come back for another sketch plan. No. Will you and I and Don will work together okay. on everything. So that would be, you know, the landscaping plan, the lighting plan, plan. the you know, street maintenance agreement, shared parking plan, all the stuff for the final application. Um, I don't think you, you could come back for another visit if you wanted, but I don't think you would. I, I won't need to. And then then I do come back for a final. So. Yeah, we'll have I to come, come back. back. That's when we uh, okay. apply for the final okay. approval is this next round with all of this. All that right. additional information. Yeah, but I was not going to ask you to do a landscaping plan before this without right. hearing from them. Right, right. No, that's a good idea. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, maybe hold on one second. Sure. <laughs> yeah. didn't miss anything it's not there. quite done. That's okay. So <laughs> we, <laughs> there are a lot of details, and I think we got through a lot of them, but I, I just, uh, I think I wrapped my head around the big ones, but we'll make sure we didn't miss any anything else while you're here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think so. It's a subdivision, so ultimately you're producing, you know, a final plat of of these. Um, ultimately, the you know, there's we have landscaping. There's going to be some once it splits into two parcels. You know, there's going to be some responsibility of like parcel, you know, one or lot one and lot two to continue to maintain, you know, the landscape, you know, the landscaping. If we do go that route, right? Um, similarly, like. Um, kind of where it's not specifically clear in our subdivision reg just to like how much needs to be included, but when it comes to like you know, utility access um, and um, you know just any of the rights at which are particularly shared between the two parcels, just make sure that those are all very clearly on the final plan that comes forward. Sure. Maybe not so much for this process, but then when someone comes in for site plan review, <laughs> we can easily. You know, look at that. Right. Sure that yes. No, I... Not negatively impacting any of those your know, rights from your neighboring lots. Um, and it seems like a lot of the information is already shown here, but um, that's that was my thought and recommendation here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, that makes sense because you have the water and sewer and stuff running under the road and all of those aspects of it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, like you know the parking agreement you know it's like that's not all specifically laid out in the plan uh, maybe uh, maybe it's maybe it is <laughs> i'm not really sure but like you know i think our preference is the more detail you show as far as like yeah. where the rights are in each um, okay. makes it easier in the future whether that's actually required to get into the fine fine detail um i mean that's that's a whole different 
different story. <laughs> um, but um, I don't know. I think just a, a really good subdivision plan, um, I think, is appreciative down the road for making the rest of the permitting process easier. Sure. Yeah. I'm sure Don can do that for us. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Good. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Michael, I'm sorry if you were on sort of hold for a while there and I didn't see you. It's I have to have the volume from my laptop off so that we can have the microphones on. So I'm not sure how long you were waiting to get in. It sounds like you all did well without me. So <laughs> yeah. thank you, Meredith. Yeah, sorry about that. When nobody else is on remotely, it's hard to remember to keep looking at the screen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, get the attendance uh, there. I Stat. did. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks, Michael. Um, our next meeting is on um, November 19th, and I believe we have a couple applications. November. Right. September. 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 <laughs> it's, dark out, it's dark outside. It's, I was not, it's not that late. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yeah, September 19th, we do have a couple of applications. Um, I think they are both actually driveway parking related. The so one asking for a second driveway to facilitate additional parking and one asking for a exempt a minimum parking uh, exemption so that they don't have to build a second driveway that they got previous approval for. Oh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> yes. There'll be a couple of interesting stuff to write. Okay, all right. Second motion to uh, adjourn. Second it. Oh, I will. And second it. Okay. Motion by Joe, second by Sharon. <laughs> uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, meeting is over. Thank you, everybody. Like motion approval.